Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. So we're looking to do the wheel bearing assembly here on a 2005 Mazda 3 S. Going to take the lug nuts off, 21 millimeter lug nuts, uh, left to loosen, right to tighten. That's pretty much true of all nuts and bolts. So I'm going to take the tire off and we'll break these loose while the vehicle's on the ground probably a turn or two and then go ahead and jack it up and use safety stands. Protect yourself and then take the tire off the rest of the way and we'll get to the caliper and the rotor and everything else there. All right, we have the ABS connector. Gonna push down on this tab and release it. There's a sensor right down there. And we'll take that sensor out as well. And take the lug nut or the caliper bolts out. One right there. And one right there. I'm going to guess they're probably uh, 16 or 17 millimeter. So that's what we're doing next. And a little bolt down there, I'll tell you what size that is too. It's you know, I got a lot of reverse torques, but we'll see uh, what size it is. So it's an E5. Ooh. Just gonna take that little bolt out, take the sensor out, so we don't maybe damage it when we uh, take the hub assembly out. So there's the socket right there, E5. Where's that bolt? Just have a little Loctite on it, so it might be a little stiff at first. <laughs> Just spray some lubricant in there, maybe to get that uh, sensor out. All right. So for me, while I'm uh, I get that sprayed, some penetrating oil, then we'll uh, take this off, the caliper off, and we'll support it up on the uh, spring, probably. Let's see, get this off. Right, and we'll support that. If you take your hand and pull outward, it helps collapse the piston. Comes off easier. The rotor should just slide off. If it doesn't, you can take a hammer and tap it on the back side, maybe. You need a block of wood to protect the metal. <clears throat> it's interesting, it's like step one to do this, but it's a lot easier to get to once this other stuff is out of the way. So, my opinion is do it maybe step number six or seven. All right, so we have access there, and we probably got a uh, bolt here. We'll have to take that off as well. 
So we'll take a pliers and carefully try and twist that back and forth and get it out, hopefully. Boom. Nothing to it really. Good. Thirteen millimeter. Little Loctite on it. So we'll take this uh, clip out here. Thirteen millimeter, probably. Oh, dang. Fourteen. changing things up on me. We'll leave that on there for right now. I'll use a hammer and hit that a little few times to uh, separate it. I'll take that out. Probably a 17 millimeter bolt again. Pinch bolt. And uh, what do we get here? 14 millimeter. Uh, nut on the other side, so we'll take this out too, nut and bolt. So, we'll uh, get a pry bar and pry down on this. There's a slot here actually too. May or may not need to maybe drive a small wedge in there, chisel, open it up a little bit and let this uh, lower ball joint come out easier. Got my super long pry bar. Makes it pretty nice. And so then we're less left with this pinch bolt. So let this caliper dangle down a little bit. This is also a pinch setup, so this is just gonna slide off. Maybe take it with a hammer and knock this down. But we can maybe take the uh, punch through a little bit, maybe, and uh, take the CV axle out of the hole because we can swing this out nicely this way. So that's what we're going to do. Some blue Loctite on it. Got a little bit of blue Loctite on it. 
All right, we probably just tap that down then. Right here, but I don't have that. Sounds dry. All right, sorry I forgot all about uh, videotaping, but I used a press to press this out, the hub assembly and bearing assembly out of here. This one like this. Had it upside down, pressed it through, pushing on that, and uh, it came out, of course. So. I guess I'd recommend taking this to a machine shop in your area. I'm really not sure about taking a hammer to this in any way. Because you're going to want to put it back in too. And if you don't have a press, then you might not want to be messing with it. I would bring it to a machine shop, have it taken out, and have them put the new one in. And you can take the nice assembly and remount it to the your car. So we've got the new one pressed in. Real nice. There's a cutoff date for two different possibilities on this, so be aware of that. You might need to get the manufacturer's date on the inside of the driver's door. There's going to be a sticker with a manufacturer's date, month, and year on it, so be aware of that. <clears throat> Sand this down a little bit, get the rust off there, and put a little lube on it, make it go on easier. Same with this little wire brush on there as well. Make sure it lines up with this baby in the back here. Looking good. So we'll uh, maybe keep tapping it upwards.
they do recommend a new bolt in here so you want to look for that if you're doing this job a new bolt if you have this style actually two options you can have the nut on the CV axle or this bolt so we have the bolt here <clears throat> Go ahead and put the sensor in while it's easy. Always want to start all bolts by hand. Everything's started and we'll uh, torque things up. We'll give you the torque specs. All right, so this is uh, like 24 foot pounds and then about 85 degrees extra turning. And then we have about 35 foot pounds on this one, and then 35 foot pounds on the lower ball joint pinch bolt. Then the pinch bolt right here. It's about uh, 50 foot-pounds and then the caliper mounting bolts are about uh, 70 foot-pounds and the lug nuts wheel lug nuts are uh, about 85 80 to 85 that's your wheel bearing hub assembly on your Mazda 2005 Mazda 3, 2.3 liter.